This is the new BMW iX M60, and it's a little bit like boxer Anthony Joshua because it's one of the heaviest of the heavyweights, yet it packs a mighty, mighty punch. And in this video, we're gonna see exactly how much punch it packs. So I'm gonna launch it from 0 to 60 miles an hour and time it over the standing quarter mile. How fast will it be? Also in this video, I'm gonna talk you around the exterior and interior upgrades BMW has made to this car over the standard iX to give it the M treatment. I'm Matt Watson. And you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, Car Wow. Let's start off this video with the design upgrades that BMW hasn't really been bothered to do with this car over the standard iX. All that you get that's different is this badge here, and then this badge has like the bronze and black. You don't get that on the standard iX at all. They're moving down the side, you get an M badge there. Otherwise, everything you see on this car you can have on a normal iX if you specify M Sport. For instance, these 22 inch alloy wheels, you get them standard here, but you have to pay extra for them on the normal car, but you can get them. The blue brake calipers for the sporty M Sport brakes, they're standard here, but you can select them on the normal iX. Likewise with the front bumper, which is a bit more aggressive, shall we say, with this lower front splitter, you can have that when you specify M Sport on the normal iX. Oh, and you can get laser lights if you pay £2,000 extra on the normal iX. Here, on the M60, they are standard. So really, you can make any iX look pretty much the same as this car, apart from those badges. Price, that's £117,000, which is quite a bit more than an iX40 M Sport, which pretty much looks the same. Here on the inside, it's a similar story to the outside. So the only upgrades that you get, that you can't get on the normal iX, this little, M colours on the speed and rev counter. Oh, and you also get some new driving modes, expressive and relaxed. Other than that though, it's basically stuff that you can get on the normal iX as an upgrade. So as standard on this, you don't have to pay extra for it. You get the lovely bluish leather. You get the goldy accents, which are nice. You also get the crystally crystalliness here, here and here, which I like as well, though it's a little bit jazzy. In the back seats, it's standard iX really, so loads of knee room, head room, big spacious bench seat, flat floor with lots of room to stretch out for absolutely everybody, really, really comfy. USB ports there and some place to hang a special thing off there. Posh feeding folders on the back seats, big door bins, all quite nice. And while we're at it, look, we've got that with that. That's how I'm gonna explain things from now on, just point at things and go that. It's that, that, there's that as well. Actually, I forgot to mention that. You see, if I press that, then you can see that. But if you, oh, that's a little bit too much like that. You can press it again, and it won't be so much of that, and more of that. It's good, that, journalism. The M60 has no changes when it comes to the boot of the car, so it's the same 500 litres that you get with a standard iX, which, is kind of big enough, but to put it into comparison, an EQS SUV from Mercedes has 880 litres of space. So that's 76% larger than this boot. So at least you have no load lip, which is handy when you're lifting things in and out. And amongst your 500 litres, some storage under there for all your cables. The rest of the features, well, you've got a solid parcel shelf, which is a bit of a faff to remove. And look, you have to remove that one from there. Oh, and the store. See, there is not five annoying things about this car. Some sportier versions of normal cars tend to have slightly more contoured rear seats to help keep the back passengers in place when the driver decides to hoon the car through some corners. This one doesn't though. It's completely flat, look, quite any support at all. So the rear passengers could end up going like this when the driver starts having some fun. And this is not fun. I'm not having fun, not like this. You get the idea. Efficiency really matters with an electric car. And unfortunately, because it's got the larger wheels as standard, which are less aerodynamic than the smaller wheels, the drag coefficient of the M60 is 0.27 CD compared to the 0.25 for the standard car. The M60 can make passengers feel like second-class citizens because while the car comes as standard with a massage function for the driver's seat, the passenger, they don't get the massage. Apparently it's not even available as an option. Sod the passenger. The rear windows only go down this far. That's like halfway. That BMW haven't even tried. 
One of the great things about BMW's M batch cars, not just the full fat M's, but the M lights, is that you can always turn off the stability control to have some crazy ass fun. However, there is no button for the stability control in this car, not even in the infotainment menu. How can this car have an M badge? How? However, it's not all bad. Here's five cool things about this car. For instance, BMW have fitted it with what it calls an actuator-based wheel slip limiter. So apparently it's even better than normal traction control at stopping the wheel spinning, yet without reducing power so you can get maximum traction off the line without it bogging down. You know, so you can put in those good 0 60 times. Unlike the normal iX, this M60 actually has launch control. It's that easy to use. You just put in sport mode, left foot on the brake and floor the accelerator. Then you get this eerie tension noise just to add to the suspense. Also, it vibrates the rear wheels to make it feel like the car's shaking, straining at the leash, ready to take off. It's so weird. It feels kind of cool the way it vibrates you. The M60 has slightly recalibrated air suspension to make it feel a little bit tauter, sportier, and fun when you're driving on a twisty road. The M60 gets Bowers and Wilkins Diamond 4D surround sound system as standard. So you get 30 speakers, including some in the headrest, and little shakers in the seat backs to make you feel the bass through your spine. Another upgrade the M60 gets as standard is the interior security camera, which sends a live video feed to your phone so you can tell if someone is driving it without your permission. Could be used if someone's trying to steal it, but more likely if, say, your son decides to take the car for a joyride when they're not supposed to. It's very likely. It's the kind of thing I'd have done to my dad and did do. He just had no way of telling. The main reason to buy an M60 over the normal iX50 is the fact that it's got a lot more performance. So the 50 has 523 horsepower and 765 newton meters of torque. The M60, though, has 619 horsepower and 1,100 newton meters of torque, which is insane. Has the same battery capacity as the 50 though, at 105 kilowatts and slightly reduced range because of the extra performance. So BMW says it will do 348 miles on a full charge. The charging system is the same as well. So DC can do 195 kilowatts. For AC charging, it can only do it to a maximum of 11 kilowatts, whereas competitors from Mercedes and Audi can charge up to 22 kilowatts, which is obviously quite handy. Also, this seems to have the biggest charge flap any car I've ever seen. Look at that. It's obscenely large. BMW says the iX60M should be able to do 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds, but let's find out for ourselves, shall we? Got my specialist timing gear here. I'm going to launch it. So left foot on the brake, floor the throttle. Oh, whoa, that, that sounds powerful. Just electric things going on. Release the brake. <laughs> Not 63.56, what's the quarter mile? I quite like the sound effects actually. Do you think I would? They really do suit it. Woo, 11.93. Wow, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do now as well while I'm at it. Let's do a brake test from 60 miles an hour. There, ready, three, two, one. <laughs> Serious brake test face. Fly me, 60s naught, 31 meters for a big heavy car. That's so impressive. Let's move on. God, that's brutal. That, that's, that's dangerous. I mean, you could actually hurt someone with the way this thing picks up. Like, if you have a passenger, that would absolutely shock them and you could give them like reverse whiplash. Now that's actually normal whiplash. And you get, I don't know what I'm talking about. See, it's already affecting my brain. Look, I'll show you with this. It's the classic Matt Watson dangling mic test to show you acceleration. You ready? Watch this, watch this. So just tooling along. Ow. Yeah, look at that. I mean, that is just completely insane. I'm not sure I felt anything that brutal before. Not even a Tesla. Just the throttle response when you first go. Ready? Three, two, one. Ow. I mean, look at it. This thing is crazy. Actually, let's see if this pony does have a few more tricks up its sleevey, wheel archy, whatever, hoof. I don't know. I'm going to drive on a twisty road. Still in sports mode. So that's keeping the suspension 
firm. It's not that firm though. Hopefully it shouldn't lean too much in the bends. Hey! It goes around all right. Surprisingly so, actually. Whoa! <laughs> wow! <laughs> it's all right, you know? <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I can feel the stability control kind of like limiting the throttle I can have. <laughs> that is more fun through the corners than you'd imagine it would be based on just the look of it and the size of it and the weight of it. <laughs> and of course when I'm braking as well, I'm recouping lots of energy and put it back into the battery and so it's all very kind of like carbon neutrally brilliant. Whoa! Oh, and the punch out the bends. That's epic. There is one thing about this noise that this car makes, and I think I need to change gears just by the, the way it sounds like you're revving up an engine. <laughs> Obviously the engine on a spacecraft. I can't believe the grip it has, and the traction is so good. Whoa! <laughs> right, I'm going to back off. So what I'm going to do now is try a different mode. I'm going to go into efficient. Now it's silent. The suspension has got softer. The motor response is more subdued. It's more chill. Yeah, the car's leaning a bit more in the bends. Let's try a different mode. So let's go for expressive. What's that going to do? What the heck was that noise? What, what noise is that? It's like you've got about 10 people on a 1980s synth just playing a bunch of chords together. I have no idea what chassis or throttle response settings I'm in with Expressive because I'm too busy focused on the noise. I think BMW have actually done really well with this sound thing. Whatever they paid Hans Zimmer, it was worth it. Let's just try one more mode. So do it down here. Right, relax. What is relax like? Do you know what? That's the noise that plays inside my head whenever I step into an empty church. It's slightly spiritual. So this is probably the most I've ever talked about the noise a car makes, even including all internal combustion engine cars. What is going on with the world? <laughs> So then, what's my final verdict on the BMW iX M60? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the M60. It does deliver a lot of performance, but if you want a performance SUV, you may be better off still with an old fashioned internal combustion engine. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think of my verdict in the comments below. Do you agree with me? Click on those windows there to see some of the videos and on that box there to subscribe to this channel to make sure that you don't miss any uploads. Thanks for watching.